so I'm Galen McQuillan. I'm here from, uh, from Connecticut, and I'm here to do some juggling and some magic tricks for you today. That's the plan. No, I'm just kidding. So we had some great talks this morning, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about how to change the world by having absolutely no idea what you're doing. It's something that I believe very strongly in, and I think it's an idea absolutely worth spreading. Um, so, here's the general idea. Uh, you're all back from these really, really inspiring talks. You have these great ideas, you're feeling charged, you think you know how to go out there and make things great happen. So, naturally, I think I should begin my talk with some really, really depressing numbers. <coughs> Take a look. <clears throat> U.S. unemployment rate right now is 8.7%. That means that of all the people out there who could be working, 8.7% of them aren't, for whatever reason. It's one of the highest that it's ever been in our history, in our nation's history. 10.6% was the highest, and that happened in January of last year. So it's going down a little bit, but it's still higher than it's ever been before. So if you're running the numbers in your head, that means there's almost a 10% chance that you might not have a job, even though you might want one. That's kind of scary. Next one up here, average number of careers over a lifetime. If you're between the ages of 18 and 45 right now, that means that over your lifetime of work, you will have seven to 13 different jobs. Not the same type of job, but with different people, but seven to 13 completely different, unrelated careers. That's the statistic right now from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, so these are smart people. <laughs> average student loan debt, if you go to school and you borrow money, there's uh, the average that you'll graduate with is $24,000 that you owe to a bank, or to the government, or to your school or to somebody, maybe to your parents. $24,000 that you will graduate having to pay back. That's kind of scary. Average age of retirement right now is 62, which means if you graduate college at 22, which is what time most people graduate, you're gonna work for 40 years of your life before you're able to say, you know what, now I just wanna start having some fun. <laughs> Dangerous and freaky and a little bit terrible. Uh, last piece here is the average cost of a two-year degree, which is the standard of what we call job training. If we're going to teach somebody how to do a whole new job that they've never done before in their life, on average it costs $5,426 to do that. Somebody's got to pay that. That's the general idea. So these are some really kind of scary numbers, and this is the state of the world that you guys are entering that young people are entering. Not to mention, not to mention that we have kind of a crippled economy right now. Things are not great. Social security, which is supposed to take care of you when you're older, might not be around. In fact, probably won't be around. We're really not sure what's happening with healthcare. Maybe we're all gonna have it, maybe we're not. Somebody's gotta pay for it anyway. We've got environmental crises and wars going on, and there are songs like Rebecca Hall's <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> this is your future. This is the state of your world right now. This is not a good thing. This is not a good thing. This <laughs> goddamn Get rid of that. Get rid of that, please. Oh my okay. god. Um, so how did we get here? What's the state of things? How did we get to this point? Well, a lot of people get paid a lot of money to write books for one another, to sit down and read and be rich and talk to each other a lot about why this happened. There's a lot of really good theories, but today I'm gonna to present one of them to you, which is the one that I'm passionate about. I believe that there are too many experts in the world. There are too many specialists. Too many people who are really, really good at one thing. Why is that a problem? Why is it a problem to be really good at one thing? Well, for one simple reason. What happens if you lose your job? And if you've been paying attention to the news lately, losing your job is kind of the way things are going right now for so much of our country. That's what happens when the economy doesn't go so great. People lose their jobs for one way or another. And what happens to them? Where do they go? Well, somebody's got to pay for them. Somebody's got to pay for their unemployment benefits, which is just money that they need to live on. Somebody's got to pay for their welfare checks so they can take care of their kids. Somebody's got to pay for their Medicare so that they, if they get sick, then they can be taken care of. Somebody's got to pay that $5,400 for them to get a new job, and somebody's got to pay for the industry to get saved so that they can get back to work. And who pays for that? You do. All of you do. All of you will pay for that. The taxpayers pay for that. When you hear the government talking about providing all these things for people, they're going to provide these things with your money. That's kind of a scary thing, 
it might not necessarily be a bad thing, and people believe that that's what we should do. I happen to believe that's what we should do. We should be taking care of people. But is this the reason, is this the way that things absolutely have to be? What's the deal with all these experts? All these people who are good at one thing, what are they good at? What do we have all these people good at? Well, let's take a look at uh, the top college majors right now. Top college majors right now, business management and accounting, finance, biology, political science, accounting, psychology, history, economics, mechanical engineering, marketing, and marketing management. Does this look, list look kind of familiar to you guys? These are really popular common careers. If you go to grad school, then these are what you're going to see uh, as the most popular degrees for grad school. Next slide. No? Oh, that was it. That was it. Ah, oh, I lost the slide. Oh, there it is. I guess we skipped one. Anyway. Um, What's the deal with all these careers? They're the things that we've been told will make us the most money. They're the things that we've been told are going to give us the best security. You have the best chance of keeping a job if you get a degree in one of these things. That's the general idea here. So what does this tell us? It tells us that we've been sold on the idea that the best way for our country to be prosperous is for people to be really good at things that make them money so that we don't have to take care of them. I don't really think that's the best strategy. I don't think that's the best strategy for the world to come out of all of these really big problems and to change things. Another interesting list, and this is where it gets specific to America, here's a list of the jobs that are most commonly outsourced, which means sent to another country. Next slide. Oh, we lost that slide. Anyway, ah, we'll move on, sorry. <laughs> so what are we good at? What are the things that these people, these experts, are good at making us do? The top U.S. exports, these are the things that we are actually good at creating. We're good at making stuff. <laughs> these are all the things that we're really good at selling to the rest of the world. But here's the scary part of this picture. All of this stuff looks really good and technologically advanced and highly interesting and really exciting, but over the last 15 years, the amount of all of this stuff that we're selling has gone down dramatically, and it's still going down. We are selling less and less of all of this stuff every single year, and we're buying more and more of it from other countries. We are losing all of this technological expertise despite the fact that we have all of these really, really great experts who are really good at all of this stuff. But what's the big sell right now? What's the thing that you're hearing from the government and from your school and from colleges? What's the big career you're being pushed into? You've probably heard this word, STEM. You heard that word before? It stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Just so you know, I'm a math teacher. And I'm standing here telling you I don't think it's right that we're pushing everybody into doing science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But that's what you've been sold. If you watch the government's the State of the Union address, President Obama in his 2011, this year, State of the Union, had a really, really big line in there where he said, we need to make science cool again. We need to celebrate the winners of the science fair like we celebrate the winners of the Super Bowl. It was a really famous line. But that's not all. There has been a line about teaching young people to be scientists in every State of the Union address since the 1961 speech by John F. Kennedy where he said, we're going to put a man on the moon. That's 50 years of telling every young person you should be a scientist. We're not the experts anymore. It worked for a while, but we're not the experts anymore. America is not the science experts anymore. Take a look at the next slide. This is what you have to do in order to be a science expert. In order to be a science expert and get the kind of job that's not going to be sent overseas, you need to go to grade school for 12 years. That's just to become a senior and graduate high school. Then you need four years for your bachelor's. Then you need at least two years for your master's degree, four to eight years for your doctorate degree, two to four years doing a postdoc study, and then you can hope to get a really good job as a scientist or an engineer or a technologist. That's 24 to 30 years total that you're going to spend in school. I'm not trying to discourage you from that. <laughs> you know, it sounds like I am. I'm getting ready to go back and get my doctorate starting next year also, after having already been in school for 19 years of my life. So it's an okay thing to do. The problem is, to most people in America, this is not the path to security. If they want to be successful in their life, it doesn't sound great to say, I'm going to go to school for 30 years and then start living my life. 
Take a look at the next slide here. Foreign-born college enrollment. This means people from other countries who are coming to America to go to school. Since last year, 14% more people are coming to America to get science and technology degrees than ever before. So at least 14% of colleges more, 14% more of the enrollment is made up of people who are not American citizens, who are taking all that expertise and going to their home countries to become better. <coughs> That's why our exports are going down. That's why we're not making all this great science and technology that you keep hearing about. Take a look at the next one. This is, this is I think, the most interesting slide of all. <laughs> this is a comparison of how many jobs versus how many people are graduating with these degrees over the next, until 2018. In engineering, more graduates than jobs in America. In life sciences, way more graduates than jobs. Mathematics, hey, math teacher, way more graduates than jobs. Physical science, way more graduates than jobs. The only one, the only one of them all where there's more jobs than there are graduates is computing. But when's the last time you called tech support? Did you get somebody who lives in America on the other end? No, no. no. All of those computing jobs are going elsewhere because that's where the experts are. They're in China, they're in India, they're in Eastern Europe, they're in Korea. They are not here. So what do we do? <laughs> what do we do if we're all being told to be these STEM experts? How do we make America strong again? How do we get out of all of these crises? What do we export if not technology? Here's the idea. We export ideas. <laughs> we become innovators. We let America be the center of the world for new ideas. Instead of sending things overseas, we send the best creativity that we can come up with. This is a big idea, and it's a really cool idea. And all of you are going to be the ones that are sending your ideas to the rest of the world. So how do you get good at that? Next slide. This is how. <laughs> Spend your life having no idea what you're doing. Really. It's okay. If you've ever woken up and gone, man, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. That's okay. Hang on to that feeling, please. That's the best feeling in the world. Try something of everything. Try little things, try big things. Learn one thing and the next year learn another thing. Become great at lots of stuff. There's a name for this kind of person. We used to call them Renaissance men, who know a little bit about everything. Or we would call them uh, jack of all trades. Or this is the best one, we would call them liberal arts majors. <laughs> Which is synonymous with unemployed, right? <laughs> or works at McDonald's. Hey, how's your barista job going, right? Um, no, uh, that might still be the case right now. Right now, for the moment, that's the case. But it's changing, and you can be the ones to change it. If you can be the ones to say, no, no, all of my diverse knowledge and all the new ideas that I've got are going to be used to change the world, then people will start to believe it. If we can convince our government that having people that know something about everything means that we are more creative and we can sell that to other people, then it's not gonna be a bad thing to be a liberal arts major. It's not gonna be a bad thing to say, I have no idea what I'm doing. So, the official word for somebody who knows a little bit about something is a polymath. Polymath means multiple math. <laughs> I'm a math teacher, so I think that's pretty cool. Here's some of history's great polymaths. Take a look. Uh, this guy up here is called Archimedes. Uh, he came up with some of the most revolutionary ideas way, way back 2,000 some years ago. Leonardo da Vinci, you've seen this guy before? He was a painter, he was an inventor, he was a writer, he was a musician, he was a politician. Did he do one thing? No, he did many things. We got this guy, Thomas Jefferson, who was an architect. He made great beer. He made uh, houses. Oh, wait, he was also president. That was cool. Benjamin Franklin was not president. I don't know if you knew this. He was not a president. But he did all kinds of amazing things. Thomas Edison, an inventor, but he didn't just invent the light bulb, he invented thousands of things, from sound recording equipment to light bulbs to electronics to plows and better farm equipment. And then we got to um, James, Franklin. Uh, James Franklin. <laughs> One of history's great polymaths. 
What? <laughs> this guy went to Yale. He went to Yale for English. Before that, he studied French. He studied like German literature. He studied the history of China. And now he's going to the University of Houston to get a doctorate in creative writing. And also, he's an Academy Award nominated actor. Now, whether or not you think his movies are great is a totally different thing, but he's good enough at all of those things to get nominated. That's kind of a big deal. So what does a 21st century career look like if you're not going to be good at one thing? You're going to be a little good at a lot of things. What does that look like? Well, we would kind of call it consulting. You're going to get hired by a company to come in and just sit there and come up with ideas, and they're going to pay you a lot of money for it. You might be, we, sometimes we call it entrepreneurship, which means you go out and you start your own business in something that nobody's ever thought of before. You might not even know what it is right now, and it might hit you in the shower one morning. It might also be called upper management, which means you're a boss. You'll get hired by a company that says, we have no idea what to do with this company. Let's hire somebody who's just crazy and see what happens. And often, if you have a lot of things you're good at, good things will happen. The CEO of Google right now was one of the guys who invented the company, and he's great at a lot of things, but he's not good at running a company. He's got all these crazy ideas like, hey, what if we digitized every book in the world? Or hey, what if we made cars that drive themselves and make maps where they go and take pictures of the roads? Oh wait, that's Google Maps. You use it almost every day. <laughs> this is just a guy who has <clears throat> diverse interests, and he's running one of the biggest countries in the world. And when's the last time you said Google that? <laughs> because he's got all kinds of crazy ideas. Check out the next slide. How to get into college and get a great job. Do lots of stuff, get really good at it, put it on your resume, don't just specialize in one thing, repeat the process. You've been told so many times, what is it that you want to do? What is your career counselor sitting there saying, I want one thing, what is the one thing you're going to go into? Do you want to be a doctor? Do you want to be an architect? Do you want to be a physician? Do you want to be a veterinarian? There's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know. Because here's the best part. If you become one of these creative individuals, one of these polymaths that has great ideas about everything, then we can ship your creativity overseas. And from a selfish taxpayer's perspective, I love this idea. Because other countries will pay you money while you're still here. And that will take care of all of our national crises. Because you stay here, you pay taxes here, you buy goods and services here, you buy a house here. Every bit of your money stays in this country and pays for that social security, and that welfare, and that national debt, and that unemployment, for all those <coughs> experts that are still stuck, because they can only do one thing well. Every other country in the world sends their money here for our great ideas. So that's my charge to you. If you don't have any idea what you're doing, that's okay. Hang on to it. I'm not saying that you need to dig a mile wide and an inch deep. Try you know, one tiny bit of everything. I'm saying dig 15 or 20 little holes that are all half a mile deep. Learn a new skill. Learn an instrument. Learn how to play uh, oboe. Learn how to juggle. Learn how to do something crazy. Because that's how you practice to make your mind good at innovating. And that's my recommendation to you. Stop making sense. Stop worrying if you don't know what your life is going to happen. What's gonna, where are you going? As long as you're going somewhere and you wake up every day and say, I don't know what's happening next, but I'm really excited about it, then smile because you're doing exactly the right thing. Thanks. <laughs>